Alrighty folks, um, time for a little intro to the controller that we're going to be building for the uh, E39 project. Um, this controller will uh, be different to the controllers that I built before in one sense and quite similar in others. Um, the basic specification that I have at this point for the controller uh, will be that we will be able to handle somewhere between 1000 and 1200 amps, um, probably up around 200 volts, and uh, will be um, based upon. Uh, hopefully uh, uh, some of the good design practices that I've uh, picked up and probably a lot of the bad ones as well. So to start off uh, we need the main uh, brains of the controller and in this case I'm going with um, a control card that I'm familiar with, with and that I've had very good uh, dependable service from in the E36 and this is the 500 amp um, open revolt uh, control board. Now in order for us to uh, break away from the limitations um, of the original 500 amp design um, for this board we needed to do a few things differently and the first of those things is the current sensor now the previous uh, builds that I would have done on the Revolt uh, would have used a Lemhas uh, 300S um, Hall effect sensor uh, such as this one. This is actually a, a 50S but uh, the 300S is in the same form factor. Uh, it's a very good sensor and um, it's designed for a 20 by 10 mil copper bar uh, which was very helpful in that that was the uh, bus bar size that um, I would have used on that Particular controller. Now, our new controller build for the E39 will utilize larger copper bus bar, should be 25 by 12, um, thus eliminating the possibility of using the Haas sensor uh, even if it had been able to uh, go up to the um, necessary current range. So, you need to have a look around and find a suitable sensor uh, that would go up over a thousand amps um, but would be reasonably hardware compatible with the Haas uh, 300. Now the Haas 300 is designed to run from a single 5 volt supply and it outputs a uh, 2.5 volts signal and varies that uh, either side of 2.5 volts depending upon which way that the current flows through the actual primary conductor that goes through the center of the sensor. Now in our case the current only ever flows in one direction uh, so we don't need to worry about any of that. But I needed a sensor uh, that broadly uh, worked the same way as in operated from a 5 volts DC supply and basically created a 2.5 volts output signal at 0 amps. So a bit of digging around uh, through the LEM catalogue and various suppliers um, netted me this little guy and this is a LEM 
uh, hope you can see it there, HTFS 800p um, current sensor and uh, it's a four wire connection um, of which we actually in this application only need three um, because we have uh, five volts ground and output. It's also got a 32 millimeter hole through the center um, which will accommodate the size of conductor that we're going to use uh, for the controller and it also um, has a primary current measuring range of up to 1200 amps so that's quite satisfactory uh, for our needs in this controller and it's quite a cheaply available part as well I think uh, Oh, I, I don't think I paid 20 euros for that part um, and it's readily available and as I said it's actually hardware compatible with the uh, Revolt uh, 500 amp control board. So this is essentially uh, the current sensor end of things. And as we might be able to see here, uh, we've got one of our E46 um, Hall Effect throttle pedals, uh, which we went through on an earlier video uh, when I did the conversion uh, to Hall Effect throttle in the E36. Uh, it's the same throttle that's in the E39. Um, and so we have the custom software in there that Paul Holmes uh, developed for me to utilize that style of a sensor and the various modifications again to the control board to let that uh, sensor work because this board was originally designed to work with the rather dated at this stage uh, 5k pot box uh, style of, of throttle input so the details of that are in an, an earlier video of the controller build that I did for the E36. Also what we've done on this board is we've eliminated uh, the various um, <coughs> components from the, the, the MOSFET driver section. They're not required as we'll be feeding the PWM 5 volt uh, square wave output uh, from this control board into our IGBT driver um, and uh, yeah that's about it just a little introduction to the motor controller uh, specifications and uh, how we're going to build the thing so um, what else have we got here that we can show yeah I've got the transistors uh, that I'm going to be using uh, we'll one of them out of here Get them out of the box. There it is. A bit of a challenge. Uh, these are the IGBTs uh, that we're going to use for the controller. These are Parex uh, Type CM600 DY12NF. Um, these are a 600 amp, 600 volt um, IGBT. Uh, I believe this is the same. Uh, component as used by uh, Azure Dynamics in their DMOC uh, 645 controller. Um, purchased these on eBay from uh, Jeff over at Evnetics and I uh, believe these are actually new parts from the uh, Azure liquidation sale. Um, so We've also got um, DMOC 645 heat sinks on the way to me. Uh, picked those up on eBay from a different seller. Uh, they were going for about a about hundred dollars each. Um, so I think for the kind of quality that's there is uh, quite good. So it'll provide a liquid cooled uh, heat sink and uh, a base plate to actually start the controller build on. And um, 
So I'm still looking at the DC link capacitor options, um, looking at whether I'll go with one of the SB ring capacitors or maybe some of the uh, uh, CDE, uh, C4 DEE parts. Um, so there's a little bit of a toss up, uh, so I need to have a look at that and see which would be the best uh, choice um, in terms of size, fit cost etc. So right that's it I won't bore everyone to death any more than I have done um, just wanted to do a little introduction on the controller and um, yeah so stay with us on this uh, I'm hoping I don't blow up any parts but if I do you'll be uh, seeing it in, in HD 720p. Talk to you soon folks.